Hi everyone, uh, my name is Jan Mikula and I'm um, Director in, of Product in, in Salsita. And um, today we will be talking about product delivery and uh, uh, product discovery and delivery uh, best practices. Um, so, uh, do you know what has in common like uh, services like Google Hangout, YouTube Messages, Google Allo, Google Reply, Google Spaces, Google Talk, Google Mebo, Google Plus, Gizmofy, Google Wave. Uh, all those services are communication or messaging services by Google that were at some point can canceled because they weren't successful. And it's just another proof like how hard it's even for companies like Google to build you know, successful digital products. So um, in this talk, I will be talking, uh, or I will try to actually spark or start a conversation about how to increase the chances of delivering really good products. And um, I will share my opinions about some of the best practices that I think we should, we should use. Definitely, uh, I feel that it should be uh, like conversation starter it's it's not like summaries because I think um, everything uh, in this era is is sort of moving and we always are seeing new and better practices uh, but yeah this is like my latest thoughts on on this subject so first of, first of all <clears throat> I think that even though we are talking about best, best practices I, I really uh, think that each project is very different. Um, frankly, each stage of uh, each project is very different. Like we, have, like in product lifecycle, we have let's say three main uh, phases. Like the product discovery one, where you are experimenting a lot with the direction of your product. Uh, you are you know, trying to find you know what what's appealing to to users. And there's lots of experimentation and a real major one. Maybe you even do some uh, complete pivots to, to something something else. Uh, when you find at least some traction, you you uh, you know launch some early beta version to public, and, and you see that at least some people are, are reacting well on your product. Uh, you are in the MVP phase, um, and that obviously requires also different thinking because okay you have some customers now you need to uh, figure out what are the features that they are looking for like how to retain them or how to engage them uh how to you know how to uh, spread the words about about your new product then you have like when 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 you have like some good traction and and solid business, like then you are in the scaling and growing phase where, where you are trying to really scale the product, uh, get more and more users, and and obviously that uh, you know requires completely different mindset as well. Um, so obviously in the beginning it's more about experimenting because you don't know much about. In the later stage, it's more about probably executing uh, so my first point maybe it's kind of obvious but like each phase of a product uh, development requires different practices tools and frankly even mindset and that's not uh, uh, this is not valid just for you know PMs but for each role like you know full stack developers QA DevOps uh, and for all the things that we do during the products from you know from Code, how we code things or implement things for, to code reviews, uh, how we write this. Obviously, when we are in product discovery phase, probably we don't need like heavy UI tests because you know everything is still changing, right? So you should always think what kind of tools and practices what we do uh, make for that given stage uh, sense. And obviously, I think it's very important that we use things like retrospectives to. Uh, keep talking about those things and conti continuously adjust uh, to, to the stage where we are. And, and maybe you know, change tools, maybe change practices, but always think about what at this point make, makes sense for, uh, you know, for building the successful product. You know, the whole process of building digital product, I think from high level can be split into three 
uh, main phases. The first one is discovery, uh, the second design, the third is development. In the discovery phase, the main question is why? Why we are doing this thing? Like, what kind of problem are we trying to solve uh, for, for our users? Who are our users, right? We are trying to understand uh, what's, what's the, what is the problem that we are trying to solve. In the design phase, we are uh, asking ourselves, like, what is the best solution for that problem? And obviously, in the in the development phase, when we select the the, the solution, the best solution, we try to figure out the, the best way how to implement uh, such solution and and release it to to production. Uh, I think the the important thing to say here is that in all those phases, <laughs> there are sort of two sub phases. Uh, let's call them. The first one is when you're exploring and you're trying to explore all the, the all the options there. So uh, let's let's take an example of Netflix, right? Like, okay, uh, Netflix is now very popular in uh, during the COVID crisis. Uh, everyone is watching, and for example, there is an idea that okay, maybe people, because they are locked in their homes, they want to socialize more. So maybe we can create some uh, some feature that would allow people to, I don't know, together watch some movies and, and socialize, right? So, okay, we start exploring what it means. So what it means, uh, like socializing for people, are, are there actually people interested in it? It, does it mean that they want to really watch together or uh, they want to like communicate during the movie? Like what it means, right? When we figure out, we, for example, find out, okay, you know, people actually, they are missing the, the experience from cinema because, you know, cinema are, are closed and it was sort of natural way how uh, friends can hang out, right? So, okay, the problem that we are trying to solve is uh, we want to sort of recreate the experience from, from the cinema and people where people can watch together and maybe time to time whisper about the movie because there was some, uh, you know, funny scene or something like that. Okay, cool. So we have the problem, we try to solve it, and there are many solutions how to do it, okay? Uh, you know, maybe we will show, uh, it will be sort of like, you know, Google Meet uh, view where you, you see all the faces during the, uh, during the movie, or maybe uh, you can just write messages, or maybe uh, there will be no faces, no messages, but the mic will be on and you can sort of talk and hear uh, other people's voices, right? That there are different uh, sort of design solutions how to do it. Okay, we will pick the one that we think is the best one and then we will try to implement it. Again, there are many ways how to implement it. Know, maybe we will create a new microservice or a new component, whatever, right? Like there's always different ways how to, how to develop it. The point is that we should always, we should always explore all the option but ruthlessly prioritize during the work. And I'm emphasizing the during the war because <clears throat> obviously when, for example, you are in this phase and you are thinking uh, initially about some, some concepts for the design, you didn't explore them yet. So <laughs> there is nothing much to prioritize. So first you need to explore it and then you can prioritize it. Uh, I think very often like, you know, methodologies like Scrum is this kind of thing, okay, you can sort of prioritize upfront, but the reality is that it's absolutely critical that we actually uh, prioritize during the work, which actually means that it cannot be a job just for PMs because, you know, in discovery phase, the researcher is doing the work, in design phase, the designer, in development, the developer, and there are many, many decisions that needs to be made and uh, it, it needs to be uh, done by the people that that are doing the work. So PM can definitely help. Uh, but what I'm saying here is that it's all of us jobs to like trying to pr prioritize the work during the work uh, because otherwise there will be scope creep and, and we will not uh, you know hit our deadlines and so on. So it's definitely good to explore all the options but never forget about that we need to prioritize and that not everything will simply be done uh, in, in you know, given sprint or something. Okay, so um, 
let's maybe talk a little bit more about how actually the product discovery um, uh, kind of process works. I guess the product delivery is is uh, kind of known. Um, you know, we design something, then we develop it, and then release it, right? So it's nothing, nothing interesting or nothing, uh, nothing new. The product discovery phase is also like this kind of uh, cycles of uh, of um, some uh, exercises, let's say, and. Maybe the first thing that we need, we should know about product discovery is that, like, why we actually have the product discovery. What, what is the goal? What we are trying to achieve there? The the main goal of product discovery is to actually validate ideas if they are worth building or not. Um, because, you know, if we build some idea and then we will uh, figure out that nobody is using it, like for example, this. Uh, social functionality for Netflix, it's really expensive to build such feature. And if we then find out that it's not, it was not worth it, we wasted lots of time, lots of money, and that's not good. So the, the whole goal of product discovery is to actually um, help prioritize the work. And obviously, always it's kind of a bet that we are building something if it work or not but like at least increase the chances that what we are building makes sense and will be successful so how the product discovery works so you know stakeholders uh in our case clients um other people uh, that are a part of the of the team they have lots of ideas what we can build right so what product discovery uh, does is that turn everything into the question. Everything, every idea is uh, suddenly just an assumption, just a hypothesis. And then the first thing what you want to do, you want to prioritize those hypotheses, right? So um, for example, in this Netflix example, you can say, exactly we say, okay, the idea is that you want to have uh, social, uh, somehow uh, help people socialize uh, through Netflix. And maybe we can have assumption, okay, you know, people want to talk during watching the movie or uh, people want to see other people's faces and that's make them comfort, right? Like there could be crazy ideas. And I don't know what is true, but like, okay, let, let's let note them down and let's try to uh, research if if it's correct or not, if if it's if the idea is valid or, or not, if it's true or not. And so we do, so the researcher creates some plan, right? It could be like, okay, we will actually talk to the customers or we will send some survey or, you know, things like that. That obviously will create some kind of to-do list for the, for the researcher. Uh, and when they are done with the research, they can say, okay, I found down this, this, or this. And uh, based on that, we have some kind of like, knowledge base or you can imagine as a wikipedia of of all the insight about our uh, our users about our business for example also about our competitors and based on those insights we can decide okay do we want to build it or not right so the point here is uh, that we should not like i think we are really or for for development team it's very natural to use tools like you know GitHub or Jira to organize what needs to be done. But the same thing we should do for the design work and product discovery work, like clearly say, okay, what ideas are we validating now? Uh, through which methods and what are the findings that, that we gather through the through the research? And then based on that, uh, we can schedule the, the design work and, and really figure out what is the best uh, you know design concept for, for a given problem. And frankly, for the designers, it will be way easier because they will know all the all the information, all the context information that they can leverage during the designing. So uh, here what I'm saying, let's try to focus also organize the not just the development work, but also the design and product discovery work. <clears throat> Okay, so you know it's it's great that we have you know a plan for next week, next sprint, um, next cycle um, for each team. Uh, that's great, uh, but I think we all agree that it's it's always good to have some kind of long term pers perspective on the on the product. Like what what 
you know, beyond this sprint because first of all, it's always interesting on its own, but also in practical matters, you know, when you are working on some feature and if you know that, you know, in a few weeks you will be somehow extending this feature or there is some feature that relates to this one, maybe you would implement it in a little bit different way. So uh, once you are doing this follow-up uh, feature, it will be easier for you, right? So it's definitely good to have some kind of overview. On the other hand, like for, you know, for our clients, for the stakeholders, uh, let's say, you know, the, the top managers who are uh, running running the business, um, they want to be kind of in charge, like what we are doing, right? Because uh, exactly, for example, you know, the, the management of Netflix, they want to decide if they if Netflix will be building uh, the the social feature, right? Because it, it's a big step. It's it's important feature. And the problem with, with all the products is there is always thousands and thousands of you know things that we can build. But frankly, there is only time usually for I don't know five percent of those ideas. So we somehow need to figure out like what we should build versus what we should not build, right? And with that, it should help uh, what's called product strategy. Uh, you can imagine it as, let's call it guiding principles, uh, what we should be, what we should be doing. Um, product strategy usually consists from some like key objectives, uh, some key principles, and also some key uh, KPIs, right? And again, using Netflix example, it could be like, you know, how many subscribers do we have? Like, is it increasing, decreasing? Um, how, and for example, you know, how, how often they are using uh, Netflix? Um, and for example, how many people are actually canceling the, the subscription, right? So, you know, there could be an idea that, uh, for example, somebody say, you know, <laughs> it's a very silly idea, but like, Okay, you know, I heard that you know the the adult content on internet is very popular, right? So okay, maybe we should put it on Netflix. Okay, so that's that's why we have product strategy, so we can somehow judge on this uh, weird idea. And probably okay, there are some principles maybe that we actually don't want to be in such kind of business. But mainly, okay, we have the clear KPI, right? Like it's, it's canceling subscription. So uh, imagine that we actually put some adult content on, on Netflix. Probably lots of parents and, and frankly, other people would probably uh, immediately cancel the subscription because that's not kind of content that they are, you know, expecting on, on Netflix. So clearly this is a, this is a not good feature. So, how actually like sort of the teams that are coming with ideas uh, and stakeholders that are responsible for the product strategy, how, how should they communicate about, you know, what should be done versus what should not be done? And I think that the best way how to do it is through roadmaps, but um, maybe the better uh, name for it uh, is options. I think roadmap is basically a, communication tool for for teams and stakeholders to uh, to communicate between you know uh, between each other where teams are responsible for pre prepare like responsible for preparing an uh, options that you know what kind of things we can build and then stakeholders are the one that decide okay we want to build this this and this uh, so definitely, you know, roadmap shouldn't be like, okay, you have, you know, 200 tickets in, in Jira and in the current sprint you have 15 tickets uh, or 20 tickets. And so, you know, the remaining 180 uh, are in backlog. And so, okay, what we will do is we will somehow split it to, you know, 10 more sprints and, and from that we will somehow uh, create a roadmap. Like, such a roadmap is, is for nothing because first it will for sure change. It's not really prioritized like the, the stakeholders. Okay, if they want to somehow influence it, they would need to go through each ticket and somehow prioritize it. And that's, that's not let's say user-friendly way how to manage your product. So it should be really um, a high level tool where you know the teams and stakeholders can together sort of communicate about you know what what is next 
on the high level. And and I'm I totally believe that the teams should be the one that are preparing the options in the roadmap because uh the worst case scenario is when you know stakeholders are sort of micromanaging teams what they should be working on and then you know it, it's really unpleasant situation for teams on the other hand it's also unpleasant when you know teams are sort of running the show and and stakeholders has no effective way how to actually execute the product strategy so uh i think that the best way how to um sort of uh, go uh, or how to help both parties is actually that okay teams are preparing those options and th they are you know logical that those options make sense and any of those options that stakeholders will decide uh, the team is fine to to implement and I think that's the best way how to how to do roadmaps okay so let's now talk a little bit more about product discovery um you know product discovery is the goal of product discovery is really to understand uh our users and what they are trying to achieve right frankly uh it's very there is very often a mistake that that actually we are not examining our you know our users and what they are trying to achieve with with our app in their lives but we are more sort of proposing some some solutions and uh, may, maybe to make it more clear like you know in in economics one on one you always learn that okay there is some you know demand side and and the supply side right so um let's say that you are producing boats right so okay you are a boat producer and you are doing really good boats it's great but like if there is no demand for boats like it's for nothing right you, you can have the best boats um, out there but for example you know if you are producing them in uh you know in places where there is no lake no sea like okay you know good boats are for nothing there right so and, and so we should always and this is valid also for when we are building the project uh, products like we can have really great features but like you know if it's not the thing that uh, the users are looking for and they need, like it's for nothing, and you can have great UX, great implementation, and and, and still will be for nothing. And uh, to to prevent this from happening, uh, that's why we have the product discovery phase, and that's why really in the product discovery phase, we should focus on uh, on um, really examining. Uh, the people that will be using the the product, not really on the solution. The solution is really for later for the design phase. To maybe clarify it on on uh, on like uh, on a story, like uh, let's let's say that okay, uh, you know, in the research phase or in the product discovery phase, for example, we are doing you know things like customer interviews, right? So. Uh, First of all, let me uh, give you example how such interview shouldn't be done. So let's say that uh, we are a bank and our product is that we are providing a, a mortgage, right? And um, okay, so, you know, we have young couple and we were asking them, okay, so, hey, hey guys, so, uh, you know, what do you need? And say, well, yeah, oh, we need we need a mortgage. Okay, cool, great. So you know, for um, how much money or how much money do you need uh, for, you know, how long you would, li would like to to pay for the mortgage and and we can ask for all those parameters, right? And can write it down and say, okay, cool. Like we did customer interview and we know everything about what our customers want. Okay, that that's, but the problem is that you were talking about the solution because mortgage is the solution. And the whole conversation was about the solution. So this example, how it shouldn't be done. So uh, let's try it again, uh, really focusing on the on the demand side, right? So, hey, young couple, how are you? Um, so what do you need? Uh, yeah, we, we need we need mortgage. Okay, uh, can we actually go a little bit back? Uh, can you can you guys tell me, you know, when was the first time that you uh that you start thinking about taking a, a mortgage and say yeah i know i know that uh very very precisely because it was exactly two years ago because uh our younger daughter uh she she had a birthday and 
uh, we had a like a family party and you know the kids were really screaming and it was like jesus christ like i wish i have you know some place in in my apartment where i can relax and and have you know quiet place you know ideally i wish i have um you know a garden where i can go and, and read a book right and um you know and that was the moment where we just start thinking okay maybe we should take a mortgage because and and find some some other apartment right so you see from this story that suddenly you have completely different context about what are the user user needs right it's, it's really not about the mortgage itself it's it's really about okay they actually want some new apartment or new house actually ideally maybe with a garden or definitely with, with some room with with quiet place where you know they, they where uh, parents will be protected from uh, you know kids that are screaming and so on and suddenly if you are building services around that you can offer not just like provide a mortgage but they can help to find the, the right house and because you know that those guys are looking for place with a garden you can offer them a, you know a, a house with a garden or something like that right suddenly because you listen to their stories suddenly you know way much more information and your product can be much better and really fulfill uh, fulfill their uh, their needs so here the takeaway is that i think the best way how to think about this is like imagine that you are really like filmmakers that is shooting a documentary movie about frankly our customers about our and frankly even about our clients right and always trying to sort of capture the the, the real story the, the real story behind it and try to understand like with what they are trying to make progress in their lives right uh that that's i think it's a good way how to always uh talk and frankly not just to the end user during those research uh interviews but also when we are talking to the clients right like very often is happening that clients say hey i want to build this 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 and this right and and sort of without context we should be doing something but even in those situation try to ask in a way that you understand the story maybe uh the client will tell you that you know how how the the idea uh, came on, on their mind and suddenly you will see all the context about why they are requesting this and maybe you will find that actually you know it's not about what, what they are asking for like the problem like it's maybe very clumsy solution uh, that they are require uh, requiring and maybe you can figure out a way better solution but uh, you have no chance to to propose you know better solution if you don't know the underlying story so here the takeaway is let's always try to figure out what is the underlying story and let's ask those questions this way to really uh, figure out the demand what is the demand there and and not really uh, turn the conversation about the solution because yeah it's very easier to talk about solution, but I think in order to really build great products, um, the most important is actually to understand the underlying story uh, because that will tell you uh, a lot. Now let's talk a little bit about, about design. Like <clears throat> um, the trouble is that, you know, as I already described, like we have this pro process from that, Okay, we start with some assumptions. We do some research. We get we gather some insights. Based on that, we we say okay, we will you know design this feature and and then we will develop it. The trouble is that it's very tempting or it's very easy to get sidetracked basically through all the stages. Um, so I think it's really important to to always trying to be focused on on the things that really matters and not on those things that sometimes are sort of easy and straightforward but actually they don't bring any value so when we are talking about those assumptions i think it's absolutely key that the stakeholders are giving you clear direction okay what we should be focusing on so you know using the netflix example again the the, the management of netflix should say okay there is a COVID 19 crisis uh let's explore this uh social aspect of of our uh of our product sure there are zillions of other ideas that we, we could be uh researching but like 
right now we want you to focus on this and okay it could have um, many ways how this could materialize right like as we discussed it could be that people just see other people's faces or uh it's about that you know people can uh, talk to each other during movies you know it could be anything but like okay the direction is we want to explore uh the the social aspect and you are in the inside um again you will learn a lot and when you have conversation with your customers when you are looking for uh, with uh, you know when you are looking into analytics you will come up frankly with zillions of ideas that, that could be built uh and frankly just around the the, the social aspect of uh, of netflix but again you need to prioritize what what really matters and and really decide okay right now we are focusing on this thing for example uh we want people to be able to talk to each other during the movie right and only this not anything else because otherwise again you will be sidetracked with things that are not that important during the design phase uh when you are exploring all those uh design concepts how to do this feature again you you can start sort of uh building uh you know or imagine things that are super hard to do or or you know it would be super like it would be great feature but like it would be super hard to do so i definitely recommend to do sort of two two designs one is clear like the ideal set ideal scenario like you know if you want to do it sort of full-blown feature like okay, this is how it would look like but then clearly define what is the minimal scope, what is the minimal viable solution that we need to implement right now. And then implement this uh, kind of MVP. Uh, still, I think that the ideal solution is good because at least again, developers know where we are eventually going, but to clearly say, okay, this is the MVP of that feature is I think absolutely critical. But frankly, even during the development, you know when you start devil start the implementation many times you realize okay but there are many things that actually designers forget to think about or there are some technical um technical uh, troubles or or obstacles and and you you need to uh be adjusting on the way as well there and really always focusing on on the on the highest value or on the solution that brings the highest value and don't be tempted to work on things that maybe are easy and straightforward but actually don't that doesn't uh, they then they don't bring uh value so the takeaway here is i think pm's responsibility is like define clearly the boundaries and frankly in in all stages during the product discovery during the design during the development define the boundaries where uh the team is looking for the best solution and by the way i think the boundaries should be also defined by some kind of time budget okay you know spend two weeks on this feature or, or six weeks or or one day right like clearly say you know how how much uh we expect you to spend on this feature and then the team's responsibility is to simply find and deliver the solution with the highest value um it seems like kind of obvious thing but uh, again uh, i definitely feel that it's we are all tempted very often to be sidetracked with something that is actually doesn't bring the highest value and therefore uh, we are not delivering the the the, the best possible uh, outcome as as we could um now maybe let's explore one 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 thing that uh, is happening during the development. Uh, you know, when we are starting developing something, I I would uh, estimate myself that let's say ninety percent of those tickets that that uh, we are, for example, putting to to sprints or cycles, they are going fine. But the trouble is that you know those ten percent of them, we for example think that it will take you know one day, but it it in the end takes for example two weeks right so those are those you know black swans that that actually those are the ones that are responsible for you know failure failures on on projects and we should try to avoid uh, those at all costs 
how to do it um i think that we always need to be careful about like what kind of things can go to the development i think to the development should go only things that there is no you know major risk or there are no hidden unknowns that that uh, will surprise us obviously it's that's uh, sort of easy to say but uh, harder to do i think the the way how to do it is for example if you remember uh you know shape up they are saying okay you know before you start the work uh, before you start the work um you know think about basically the main um big chunk of work that needs to be done right like so for example okay we need to do some uh database changes uh we need to create this new API integration. Uh, there's a little bit of business logic that we need to refactor on the front end. We need to you know, add new components or update the current ones. And also um, they are you know, sending uh, emails. Um, cool, so like, first of all, if you are not able to do this kind of exercise and basically you have a hard time to, to split it into those uh, big chunk of works, that's this first indication that probably uh, the, the the project or the mini project is not well defined, and there are some some unknowns and it's not ready for development. Sometimes you don't have a big issue to actually split it into those logical uh, chunks of works, but the trouble is that for example you say, well, okay, we have sending emails, but so far we we don't have any uh functionality or any any services that are sending emails and frankly i don't know how to do it uh we need to talk about it or you know it's not clear right now how i would implement it or okay we need to integrate it with with api but you know we didn't you know see the see the documentation about the api we don't have any experience with this third party uh integration right so okay so that's clearly again indication that there could be some uh, major troubles, and um, it's I think it's very useful to actually uh, try to kind of reveal them before we start the development. So what I'm saying is that we should try to always leverage the prototyping or proof of concepting to there is the task by finding those unknowns of unknown. Uh, in other words, I would say, instead of like one hour uh, meeting where you, you know, estimate tasks, I would rather spend one hour actually working on proof of concept for those tasks that seems seems risky and try to, uh, try to figure it out. Because, you know, uh, if we don't know uh, what needs to be done there, if we don't know how the hill is, is high, uh, then uh, there is a huge risk that that we will fail, and that's obviously uh, a trouble. So um, that's, I guess, my main uh, seven um, sort of takeaways or or tips uh, that I think we should do. I hope that uh, I think you you hopefully saw this uh, drawing a few months back, um, and I hope. Uh, right now you have at least a little bit more context uh, into it basically it, it tries to visualize how i think uh, we should in general work which means okay we always start with, with research validating the idea trying to understand why we are building this feature and giving context to designers where they are exploring all the design concepts and um, when they figure out the, the best design concept the development team will will take it and and uh you know implement it uh then we will uh try to release it finalize finalize it test it and push it to production and in production we will you know get feedback from analytics user testing and so on and the whole cycle continues again um so i hope that uh, i provide at least a little bit of context so again i would say uh the seven takeaways are always adjust your your practice practices for your project for your uh, face of your project always explore all the options during discovery design and development phase but ruthlessly prioritize 
please organize the design work and product discovery work at least the same way as we organize the, the development work. Uh, give stakeholders options what to build next using meaningful roadmaps. Always try to explore, explore the underlying story of you know, our customers and, and our clients. Uh, clearly define the boundaries for your work and within those boundaries, try to find the, the solution with the highest value. And don't be afraid to use prototyping and proof of concepting to, to lower the risk when we are building something. So that's all, uh, thank you.